Welcome to Yorkshire, where we're the Cheshireman, former World Cup downhill champion, Josh Bryceland, uh, and Chris Ackrig's dog in the background. Today, we're having a look at Josh's all new Motera SL. Wow, what an amazing bike from Cannondale, as we saw recently on the EMBN show. I really do think it is a moment in time for the brand, and I think the, the vibe of this bike, especially with this Cannondale graphic on the down tube there, it's really strong and I think it's quite a shift from that sort of more reserved sort of graphics which they had on some of the other e-bikes such as your Matera LT. LT. That's a long travel bike, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's a bike capable of a lot of things. Um, I did a Fest series, was the first event I ever took my LT to. Right. And it absolutely gobbled it up. Um, but obviously with the Bosch and the full power battery, there's, there's quite a few kilos difference in the weight, let me there tell is. you. Yeah, I mean, folks, this is, I think, um, special for so many reasons, not just the graphics, is the fact that this is a full power e-mountain bike with a Shimano EP801 motor, 85 newton meters of torque. Remember, it's fully adjustable and the bike weighs in at 19 and a half kilos. And that's with a 600 watt hour battery um, 150 travel at front, 140. 160 at the front. Sorry, 160 front, 143 mil at the rear. Mm -hmm. um, it's 29, 27.5 as it is, but I think it can be the flip chip to get a 29, 20. There is, right? there's room for a 29 inch wheel in the back with a flip chip here, and there's also an adjustable headset. They come in the slack setting, but you can steepen it up and you can play. I think there's three settings you can do with the cups in your headset, which, you know. It's, a, it's an amazing built-in feature, isn't it? Just to tune the bike into how you want to ride it or the trails you're riding. You, you have it in 29, 27.5 or have you tried it in 29, 29? I haven't. I would be keen to try it in full 29 because I do feel sometimes, especially on stuff like today, you get a little bit more traction with a 29-inch rear wheel. What's the traction today? Uh, in, in bits. <laughs> but the wheel, the wheel sets I've got are all mullet, really. So it came like that. I've ridden it like that, and I absolutely love it like that. I'm sure I will get to experiment at some point, but for the time being, the bike's fresh and it just feels mint, so I'm just running it. We, we spoke earlier about how cool it is to be in this era of mountain biking. I mean, bikes such as this are simply an evolution of the mountain bike, aren't they? Definitely, especially now the weight's coming down on a full power e-bike, it's like, any of the, oh, I can't quite do that. Well, I think Chris proves very clearly that the weight isn't an issue. And it's like we not. said earlier, when you've got downhill racers strapping weight to the bike, there's clearly some middle ground where, the, you know, you're losing stuff. You're losing stability and traction with the lightweight element sometimes. But Mike Marrow from Cannondale in the presentation he gave the other day said, this is the Goldilocks, this is like right in that middle point. And I, and I get behind it, it's like the, the sliding scale of the more weight you've got, the more power you need. And then just this thing just lands right in the middle and it's just so manoeuvrable. And when I've done back-to-back -back runs on my LT to this, this actually feels like an analog when you jump off one of them. Yeah, or, you know. Yeah, yeah. More. So, what could you? What? What do you see yourself? Obviously, you haven't had that much time. This is a brand new bike. So, what do you see the kind of riding that you're going to be doing on? On you. I mean, you're still going to be riding your LT, I take it. But like, what kind of rides would you do on the two bikes? Given that they're both full power bikes. Yeah. Because I want to just ride this loads. I love the Bosch. I love the power delivery of the Bosch. There's a difference in the delivery of the two motors, definitely. Um, and if you're going for a massive adventure and you're going to be all out, out all day, sometimes I get home and I'm exhausted and I've still got two bars left on the Bosch. If you've been riding in tour and you've been, you know... But if I'm going to be riding more playful trails, like this brings out that playful element. Like I said, it feels like an analog. Once you've got some speed behind you and you're rolling, it's poppy, it's light, it's like you forget you've got a battery in there. Honestly, you do. I think you're pretty poppy on the LT, man. Let's not do the, totally. let's not do the, the LT disservice. No, but... to, that's, that's the thing. And I see it like Chris proves entirely, like if you've got the enthusiasm and you like riding your bike enough, you can do anything you want on the full power, on the, yeah. sorry, on the Bosch with the, yeah. the 725, but yeah, like, yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, you run, you ride all kinds of bikes. You ride uh, Montessa, 4RT trials bike, you ride Surons, you ride mountain bikes. Do, do you really like 
having to tune into the behaviour of the different motors when you ride them? Yeah, I think like it's really interesting to observe some people and the way they um, go about their biking experience. And a lot of people want to get on a bike and change it and change it and change it. And, and I get that. Using Greg as an example, Greg's setup's never right. He's always bar stack, whatever, messing about. But I love to get on a bike and learn the machine. Like, obviously, there's basic suspension things. If you're far too soft or you're way too hard, they make a big difference. But once you've got your base settings on your bike for your weight and your levers how you like them, just to learn that machine, I find a really fun process. And I think switching between bikes, that, I love that because you feel the nature of one beast and then you switch over and you feel the nature of the other and it's like, yeah, it's part of the fun for me. Yeah, it is. Let's talk about some of the details of your bike uh, very quickly. Uh, I'm guessing Formula are one of your partners. Yes. I mean, Formula were actually one of the first people to bring a disc brake to the world. Uh, yeah. Actually, they probably were the first. They were I mean, the first, based yeah. Based in Prato in northern Italy. Um, what have we got here? Obviously, we've got 200 we've got, rotors. Yeah, we've got 200. I usually run a 220 on the front, to be fair, but um, I've just kept with the 200 on this, both ends. I've got the single air Selva fork. Um, I love the way it performs. They have a more complicated double cartridge, but I, I just love the single air on this. I find the fork is like butter. Um, and the brakes, they've what, got... What model brakes them? Are they Cura? The Cura, these are four, Cura 4s as well. They're... Um, four piston, obviously. Four piston. I have the two piston on my jump bike and another bike I'm building, but fours across the board, really. Yeah. Why not? You've got the power. Uh, the bike is laced with Berg Tech components. Berg Tech is from... Is Berg Macclesfield. Tech from, is that Cheshire, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> so we got... Uh, it originated in Stoke, which was Staffordshire, didn't it? Uh, but yeah, right. the, the Cheshire now. Uh, what grips are those? Your grips? These are a signature grip which aren't Ooh. out yet, but coming soon. Okay, right. Yeah, I've been working on them for some uh, time. We've got a signature 50 mil rise bar, right? Which I think you know it's a go-to these days. We, we first, my first bar was a 38 mil rise, and Matt was like, "Oh, it's high, it's crazy high." And then we did a 50, and now that just feels standard. It's mad. It's like as the bikes have grown in length. The front has to come up as well, doesn't it? To balance all the weight out and everything. Yeah, so. to bring yourself further back yeah. to kind of shorten the reach. Uh, flat pedals. Flat pedals. Now, you won the World Cup Series on in clips, didn't you? I did. But what's what do you ride mostly these days? Flats. Really? When I was going to go and race the EEDR in Chatel where I last saw you, <laughs> I clipped in the week before yeah. for the first time in about six years, and I really enjoyed riding them. Just like the climbs I was able to get up and when on the rough descents, just tuning out, not even worrying about the feet. But honestly, trying to keep up with him around here today, I'd have some serious bruises if I was clipped. <laughs> um, so with the wheels you've got on this bike, these are reserved? These are reserved, yeah. These reserve, are the e-bike wheels. I think they're very similar to the downhill wheels. Are they 32 mil or 30 mil? Yeah. Berg Tech seat. We've got a seat dropper on there, obviously. What gearing have you got on there, Josh? I've actually gone back to the X01 AXS. I had a really tough time with my transmission, so it got swapped out. Uh, Formula shock in the back there. Air shock, unreleased prototype. Oh, there you go. Watch the space. Um, wow, Josh, thanks so much. I mean, one thing I, got, I was going to ask you actually, where now you've got a bike such as this, 19 kilos, we're seeing enduro mountain bikes, which are like 17 kilos. What? How do you see the future of mountain biking? They've got batteries and motors. And do you really it's fantastic. think fantastic. So? Yeah. Yeah, it's natural, isn't it? I think so, yeah. I think it just, you know, we're, we're a creature of habit, aren't we? And there's a lot of resistance. And if you read through the comments on Pink Bike, even on our YouTube, it's really funny. On our YouTube, you know, obviously we're quite a core group, 50 to 1, and we put the jibbing on and we're that skate sort of style mentality and there was some hate we put a huge a video on of us like there's haters 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 and they're, they're dying back they're still there but they're dying back and it's like obviously financially it's not an easy thing just to jump on and in the second hand market becomes oh you know you're losing your warranty potentially da -da 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 -da. so i understand it's not as accessible financially 
as the analog market. Told you the dog would turn off. <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, it's it's the natural evolution, and if you're still limiting yourself, but you could afford to, I think. Um, once you actually try it, you'll think yeah. that was very silly of me. Uh, and uh, Josh, thanks. I know it's been a very physical and wet day for you here <laughs> in West Yorkshire. Uh, but thanks so much for taking the time out of coming over to, to here to ride with Chris Ackrig, hang out with Lemmy, and show us your bike. Uh, folks, any questions about Josh's bike? I'm sure there will be demos of the Cannondale uh, Motera SL around the world in the next few months. So get yourselves uh, your leg over one and it's. Uh, Good fun bike to ride. Thanks, Josh. Thank you.